Hey guys, it's Kat and I am sort of back from a maternity break. Um, I did have a baby, so this was in my belly and now it's out, which is very nice. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, oh, grumpy face. Oh my God. Uh, so this is the first time I've actually been able to get baby in the wrap. Um, so I thought I'll take the opportunity to film something and hopefully edit something while I've got two hands free because I have not had that for nearly four weeks now. So um, yeah, we've got a baby sleeping. This is my son, Sebastian. Here's my little chicken munchkin. Um, you probably can't see him. I will do a video sort of introducing him and talking about stuff. And if you have any questions about pregnancy or baby or whatever, um, I did say I'll do a, like a baby Q and A. So I'll leave any questions down below and I will do a shout out as well on my community tab. So um, there are plenty of opportunities to leave some questions, but I will look out for questions and keep them for that video. But um, yeah, right now as filming this, he is just under four weeks old. So he's sort of still in the very, very newborn stage. So it's hard to want to film with him awake, if that makes sense. Because he's either sleeping, there's moments where he's awake and sort of calm or he's crying. So it's sort of hard to get the sweet spot uh, for filming. So right now he's just sleeping is my little, my little buddy that's sleeping here. So yeah, so that's the elephant in the room, had a baby. Um, I've been off YouTube for a couple of weeks. I actually haven't filmed for four weeks. So I thought I'd come back with a really quick sort of April, May favorites just to say hello uh, and talk about a few things that I've been using. Um, and yes, I have actually been using some makeup, not heaps of makeup um, while I've, had a baby. Um, most days, or I think every day, I have worn a little bit of makeup. Um, I do like to take five to ten minutes each day while, you know, baby is hanging out with dad to um, sort of put on some makeup, watch a YouTube video and have a coffee because that sort of um, makes me at least feel awake. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Um, but the makeup I'm wearing today is probably the extent, like the maximum amount of makeup that I'll wear and I thought I'll just go through some of the products that I've been enjoying and some of the skincare that I've been enjoying because I've been hitting up a lot of skincare recently. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about really briefly today and test how long this video takes me to make with a baby. Um, but uh, I will try to be back maybe next week with a Project Pan update as well. The last video I put up was a Project Pan update. Um, but it's been a month in the, since then and I actually have been making a little bit of progress, a little bit, just a little bit. So um, I will try to film that sometime next week and at least try to have a video up every week or two while um, Bub is very new. But yeah, I do miss filming and I miss uh, having something other than baby duties. So I'm going to try to make it work. All right, so I do have a little bag. It's actually quite a big bag of um, products that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'll just pull some stuff out and discuss them. Uh, the first one is actually a product that I am rationing because I very much like it and I don't want to use it up too fast. Um, so yeah, when you're pregnant, your stomach stretches and you get stretch marks and it's uncomfortable. And I was doing a lot of body moisturizing. So I was digging into my sort of uh, collection and like the back of cupboards and stuff with backups of products and I've been pulling out a lot of body oils and um, body moisturizers and testing them all out and seeing what I think and I pulled this one out which was from I think holidays last year and I'm obsessed with it but I am rationing it because it is too good to use up too fast. So this is a Laura Mercier body and bath almond coconut milk body butter and it is divine. Um, this was in a Christmas pack. I think it was a duo. Haley took one. I took one. We did get this in PR and I, I love this so much. So it is a really luxurious thick body butter and it smells, it does smell very coconutty and very almondy. And I don't generally like coconut because it often gives me a headache, but it smells like a delicious sort of vanilla -y coconut dessert. And it leaves you so smooth and smelling so good. It's just one of those sort of pamper products and my baby, okay, I'm just going to let you know, my baby was 11 days late. It was very uncomfortable. Um, it was not good. <laughs> so uh, I did pull this out and I was just like, treat yourself. I had a bath, which was very hard to do um, with a overdue baby. But um, I got out and I like covered myself in this and I just felt so much better. So this is definitely a fancy product. And it's one, like I said, I'm just sort of not using on a daily basis. It's more like a pick me up or treat yourself kind of thing. So yeah, really, really bougie, but really beautiful body butter. And um, 
I love it. So I just thought I'd show it to you. It's super thick, but it does sort of blend in, like blend in, sink in really nicely. And oh my God, there's something about it. It just smells like coconut milk custard type product, like vanilla coconut milk custard with a bit of almond. It is, I love it. Like even if you don't like coconut, like me, it just smells like a dessert. You're not a snack, you're a dessert, honey. The next thing is also a sort of uh, body product. This is a hand cream from Tony Moly and it's the Magic Food Banana Hand Milk. Now, I do really like the packaging. It's really um, sort of, it's a little bit tacky. It's a little bit childish, but it's also a little bit fun. And I really like the detail that the information is on like what looks like a fruit sticker. I think that's really cool. Um, but this is a hand cream that I pulled out. Again, I've been going through stuff and just trying to use what I have. And I had this, I also had a peach one that I used up a little while ago, but I had the banana one. Originally, I wasn't super keen on this. I think I got this in a um, Yes Style. I don't know if it was an advent calendar or something, but I I got it. I didn't actually buy it. So it wasn't something that I'd choose because generally banana scented things put me off a little bit because they can be really overpowering and a bit like icky. Now this is an artificial banana scented product. So if you don't like that, you're not going to like this, but there's something about it that I don't hate. So it reminds me of um, banana lollies. So um, those sort of foamy weird lollies that you can get in Australia that um, have that really artificial banana taste but I, I don't hate those for some reason so that sort of reminds me well, this reminds me of that this also reminds me of snow fairy from lush so even though that's a really sweet sort of musky scent I always think it smells like artificial banana lollies so this sort of has that uh, snow fairy scent to it now what I like about this as well is it's really easy to dispense it's in a little tube I keep this in my handbag and you squeeze a little bit out so let's squeeze a bit out like that and it's so easy just on the go so it's a little bit kitsch it's a little bit like tacky but there's something about it that I really like and the hand cream's not bad it's not an amazing hand cream it's a pretty basic hand cream it's nice and thick but not too greasy um, and that's just something that like I'm not going to say it's like my favorite hand cream of all time because it's not definitely has like a banana milk banana sort of uh, big m or paddle pop kind of scent it's got that that banana scent to it, which some people are going to love, some people are going to hate, but um, the product's not bad, super, super handy, and the dispensing mechanism, like you don't have a tub that you need to like put your fingers in, and now that we're in like this pandemic and you're always using sort of washing your hands or using hand sanitizer, this is something that's really sort of hygienic and easy to just grab and moisturize your hands if you're feeling a little bit dry after washing or if you're out and about. So that I've been keeping in my handbag. I, I kind of like it. I would definitely repurchase it. Again, not because the formula is outstanding, just because I like it. There's something about it I really like. Another product that um, I did get in a Yes Style sort of advent calendar, so it's not one that I actively purchased, but it's something that I would repurchase, is this, um, what is this? A powder, <laughs> it's a loose powder. Uh, clearly, I've got baby brain. Oh, someone's crying in their sleep. All right, we've just had a baby wake up. So this is baby. This is my baby. Looking grumpy. He does the best grump face. What's happening, chicken muffin? Anyway, we'll see if we can continue with baby on the lap. Were you getting too warm? Too warm in there? All right, so the next product is a loose powder. This is, um, again, something I got in a Yes Style uh, advent calendar, so it's not something that I sort of actively picked out, but I really do like it. So it's from the brand COSRX, which is a Korean brand. And this is the Perfect Sebum uh, Centella Mineral Powder. So this is just like a translucent loose powder. I will open it and show it to you. It's very hard to do with a baby. Let's give it a crack but it is just a really finely milled white powder. Uh, if you did have deeper skin, it probably will look a bit white on you, but essentially it's just a really finely milled powder that sets your makeup really smoothly. So if you do have oils um, that you wanna set or you don't like a really dewy sort of foundation, uh, I found that powder to be really good. So it's one that I haven't used heaps and heaps of because I do have powders 
in my project pan that I'm trying to use up but when I do use it I really enjoy it and it's nice under the eyes because it's really smooth so that's one that I'm actually wearing today and um, I very much enjoy it. All right dad's looking after babies so let's continue on really quickly. I thought um, when we're talking about base products I may as well mention my favorite foundation combination of the last couple months. This is my project pan combo um, and I like these products together. I don't love them individually i like this more than this individually um, but together they are like fantastic and i'm gonna miss the combination to the point where i'm like do i buy them again uh, it's hard um so essentially i've got the hourglass vanish seamless finish liquid foundation um so this is a shade that is a little bit too sort of peachy for me it's a little bit too like warm and I don't know, just doesn't really suit me. Uh, the shade isn't natural and this is a full coverage semi matte finish foundation. Now, when I did do a wear test of this, um, I gave it a really good review and I do still really like it. Again, this is not exactly my shade. I do have another shade that is uh, much closer to my skin tone. So that's the one I will use on its own. But I also found that with this foundation, depending on how you apply it and de depending on the base you use and the day you use it, it can either look really, really great or it can kind of look a bit cakey. So um, it's one of those temperamental foundations. When it works really well, it's amazing. When it doesn't, it's not the best. Um, but I found that mixing it with uh, the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream, um, the combo is fantastic. It's what I'm wearing today. It's what I've been wearing for the past couple months. Again, I really, really love it. So this is the shade number 23. Now with this BB cream, it's one of those really raved about Korean BB creams. And I totally understand why people like it. It just doesn't really suit me. So this particular shade, um, I have talked about this in my project pan. This looks very gray, sort of brown toned on me. Um, so I'll show it to you just really quickly. I don't want to use too much of it, even though it's project pan. Um, it's sort of like a really gray tone product. It sort of looks like, yeah quite gray um, and on me like I have heard a lot of people say that they love this shade because it um, color corrects yellow tone skin whereas I've got neutral tone skin with rosacea so I find that this doesn't color correct at all doesn't neutralize my skin tone what it does it sort of makes my skin look a little bit dirty and it's very very light coverage so for me because i do have redness that i want to cover this is not enough so then i have to pack on more and it looks even more dirty so um, if you like a really 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 light coverage product you might like this and if you've got yellow toned skin you might like this as a neutralizing sort of uh, color but for me it doesn't work the best also because it is a dewier sort of bb cream um, it can make me look a little bit greasy. So for me, I don't love this on its own, but mixed with this it is perfection. Not only does the colors mix really, really well together. So again, I said this is a little bit too sort of peachy orange for me. You can see the color difference, gray, peachy orange. You mix them together and they make a really, really good neutral sort of color, which is what I wear on my face. For some reason, my hand is a lot uh, less tanned than my face, but you can see that color there. Um, I tend to use sort of two parts this to one part this. So when I combine these products, it makes the most perfect foundation because um, this adds a lot more coverage to this. So I don't need to go in with heaps of layers of it or a lot of concealer. It just works perfectly. It creates a really beautiful sort of medium buildable coverage. Um, and the color, like I said, works really, really beautiful on my skin tone. And also this tends to add a little bit of hydration to this. So, or like moisturizing properties. So it ends up being less matte, more of a normal, um, it's not dewy, it's not matte. It's just like a normal finish. Um, and it wears really, really well. So that's what I'm wearing today. That's what I wear all the time. Uh, it applies really nicely with brushes and sponges and whatnot. So I love this combination individually, like I said, not my favorites, but together they have been a combo that I don't want to see go, even though I'm panning them. So I will see them go. All right, let's continue on with some makeup. Um, one favorite that I want to mention is again, something that I put in my project pan and I mainly put it in my project pan because I've been wearing it so much that I thought I may as well, you know, target it as something that I want to hit pan on or use up because it's something I really want to use every day anyway. So it's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Um, I'm wearing it over the Jouer Rose Gold Stick. So that is also my project pan. So I pretty much put that down as a base, blend it out with the brush, and then I apply this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow over the top. Sometimes I just put on with my finger. Other times I put on with a brush, but it adds a bit of twinkly 
sparkly brightness to the eyes, which I think makes me feel a lot more awake and a lot more put together. Uh, it's a really simple way to add some, you know, texture to the eye without putting in too much effort. So that's all I'm wearing today on top of that um, stick. Uh, so this is in the shade Star Girl. So it's a really nice sort of cool toned, rosy, shimmery shade, and it's quite sparkly. But again, I call this like everyday sparkle, really easy to apply. Uh, you could just put it on and I have put it on just with no base and it just adds a bit of brightness to the eye. But what I like about it is it's got a base color to it. So um, I often find really frosty, sparkly shadows that have like a really light champagne base um, often make my eyes look a little bit puffy and funny. But because this does have more of a pinky peach base, it tends to define the eye area, but also add a bit of sparkle. So that's what I've been using a lot. Um, I love it. I think it's a really, really good super shock shadow and again for a quick makeup day like I only spend about five minutes um, doing my makeup this is something that I can chuck on the eyes really really fast and feel like I'm put together without much effort so I really love that all right so so far everything I've spoken about are things that I've pulled out of my existing collection um, everything is stuff that I've had kicking around for a while but the next things are new things that came into my life only in the last couple of weeks and I did get these in PR. So I did want to mention that, but I thought I want to give you a little bit of a rundown on what I think about them because some of these things have made it into my favorites. I love wearing them. I think they're really, really nice products. And I do eventually want to do a sort of um, try on video demonstrating them. So when I have a little bit more time and I can actually put the baby down to sleep, which at the moment we can't do during the day, doesn't work. Um, I will do a demo video on these. So I received some PR from M Cosmetics. It's the first time I've tried M Cosmetics. Um, I was lucky enough to get given two Heaven's Glow blushes. Now these I love. And for some reason, I think since doing um, trying to pan the blush palette in my project pan, I have been getting back into blush. So over the past couple of years, I wear blush, but I wear a very small amount of it. I generally wear a blush that is quite nude, so you can't really see it. It's more just to add a bit more, um, a tiny flush of color to the cheeks uh, that I have taken away with my foundation. Whereas um, lately, I've been really going a little bit more heavy handed with blush and enjoying a bolder blush and these are gorgeous. So I'll talk about these first, but I also have some lip products and some brow products that I want to talk about. Um, but these are definitely, I think, some of the standout products. So the two shades that are available, we've got Magic Hour, which is what I'm currently wearing. It looks a little bit uneven because the lighting, I'm sort of sitting on an angle. So if I sat more straight on. Hopefully it'll look a little bit more even and blended. Um, this lighting's not the best. So these two blushes are probably the things I'm most excited about from the range because um, again, I'm sort of into blushes at the moment, but these are really, really beautiful. So um, the Magic Hour one is what I'm wearing today. Um, I don't know if you can see it properly. This lighting's really, really bad, but it is a baked blush and it is beautiful. It's pink, but it's almost got I don't know, on me, it does look quite warm, which I do like because I don't like the blushes that lean very, very sort of cool toned Barbie pink, candy pink. I don't like those. I like the ones that have a bit of a peachiness to it. And what's really nice about these being um, baked products is they've got a really nice soft um, finish, like they blend really nicely and you can apply a very small amount or build it up. I have been building it up because I want to, um, but again, this has like, it's almost like a, I'll try to swatch it, but um, it, it, yeah, it almost looks, it almost looks peachy, it leans a bit peachy, which I love. So I love peachy orange blushes and I was a bit concerned that I won't like this color, but because it does lean a quite a bit warmer toned on the skin, I really like it, but it also gives a pink glow. So hopefully you can see I'm not wearing any highlighter that is just the blush. So I have been going a little bit heavy handed so you can see the sort of sheen to it. But again, it's not sparkly, it's not shimmery. It's just like a sheen. It's really, really beautiful, really soft. Love this, um, really, really gorgeous blush. Wearing it a lot. And I've also been wearing the newer one which is Faded Clementine. This is gorgeous. Again, it is more of a nude orange color. Um, I don't know if it's showing up true to camera in this lighting. Again, I'm going to have to do a video on this um, in better lighting so you can see it a bit better. But this is sort of like a burnt, 
I don't know, orange color and it's got a gold sheen to it. So you can see the difference there. It's definitely a lot more burnt orange. It's more capturing the gold sheen that it's got, but it definitely has an orangey base. So that's it there. It's darker. And again, it's got um, a beautiful sheen to it, but it's more of a gold sheen, whereas this is more of a pink sheen. So that's more of a pink highlighter color. This has more of a gold. I do have a video of me um, wearing this on Instagram. So maybe I'll put that on the screen as I'm talking, um, but these are really beautiful blushes. So I'm digging these. The formula is really lovely. Again, I built it up quite a lot to demonstrate it and to show the sheen, but you can have it a lot softer. You can have it a lot more built up if you want that sort of more sculpted blush look, but the finish is gorgeous. And because I have been a little bit more time poor lately, I do like a product that you can sort of put on and it gives you that sort of glow to the skin as well as a bit of color. I haven't felt the need to wear highlighter when I'm wearing these. It's sort of like a two in one product in my opinion. The next thing I really, really love from the range are these. Um, these are brow products and traditionally I don't like tinted brow gels because they'd never work on me, but these are the first ones that have actually worked on me and I'm wearing them today in my brows. So these are the brow creams and I have the shade taupe and the shade espresso and I have a combination of them both on my brows today because I tend to use taupe when I'm just wanting sort of more natural brows, but because I was filming, I thought I'll put a little bit of espresso in just to deepen them up a little bit, but these are awesome. So they're like the smallest brush ever, tiny, 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 tiny. And what I really like about this is they actually work in my brows. Uh, I think it's almost like a bit of a, there's less product on the wand. It's not too overloaded. So you can really put a small amount on, but my problem is that my brows, I've got really sparse brows at the front and really sparse brows every, everywhere, really. So I find that traditional tinted brow gels, um, they sort of, I don't know, they apply product where the hair is, but then when there's no hair, it just doesn't really fill it in. Whereas because this is so small and it's quite a dry brush, it's not overloaded with product. Another thing is sometimes you put product on and it's wet and it sort of just like leaves big smears on your brows. Whereas because this is so small and you can do little sort of tiny feathered bits, um, I find that I can fill in my brows. So what I've been doing is just going in, that's really bad to do that on with a viewfinder because I'm going to ruin my brows. Um, but I can go in and I can actually fill in the hair and slowly just work the product in really precisely because the wand is so small. Again, I should not be touching my brows, but this is the only brow gel that I've actually used, like tinted brow gel that works on its own. Every other tinted brow gel I've used, I've had to fill in my brows first and then go in with the tinted brow gel just to add a bit of more dimension or texture to my brows. This is the first one I've ever used on my sparse crappy brows that I have enough control over it and it's so like, e like easy to put a small amount on and then slowly build it up that I can fill in my whole brow using just these, which I've never been able to do before. So um, if you do have really sparse brows like me and tinted brow gels just don't work, you might wanna try these ones because they do work a treat. I think it's a combination of the formula and also um, the wand because it's very, very precise. The way I'd describe this is sort of like the equivalent of a micro brow pencil version of a tinted brow gel. You can really get in there and do little sort of like small definition work, which um, I really need to do. So these are fantastic. The one downside in my opinion is it doesn't hold the hair very well. So I do find that I get a lot of strays sort of sc scraggling over here, um, but it's not the biggest, like it does hold it a bit, but it doesn't hold them in place completely. But as a tinted brow gel, they're fantastic. I also wanted to mention that I have been trying their, what are these called? Infinite Lip Cloud Long Wearing Lip Creams. Now, the one that I'm wearing today is in the shade Morning Mocha, which is the sort of brown toned nude, beautiful shade. The smell, it's really interesting. It sort of smells like chocolate mousse. So if you don't like artificial chocolate scents, you probably won't like this, but it does smell quite delicious. Um, I'm gonna say I'm still trying these. This one I really like. It's the one I've used the most. It is a really light, moussey, um, matte liquid lipstick. It does transfer a little bit. So if I kiss my baby, transfers a little bit, um, but it is very, very comfortable. Um, one thing I have noticed when I try these other colors, so I've got Cashmere Cream, which is this light pink, and I've also got Radiant Dawn, which is the brighter pink, is that they can sort of gather a little bit on the inner rim. 
I don't notice it so much with morning mocha, maybe because the color suits my lip a lot better. Um, but I just need to play with these a little bit more and see how I feel about them. And then I'll let you know and sort of demonstrate them more in a review coming up. But so far, these are my least favorite things of the products I've tried. Um, but I think it might just be technique. So I'm still playing around with these, but they look beautiful. So that's morning mocha. I like that shade's really beautiful. All right, last two things. Um, I wanted to mention what I've got on my nails. Uh, so I did do a video, I think it was the last, second last video that I did talking about some nail polish colors that I really enjoy. And I'm gonna just tease people a little bit because I've got my Orly. This is the shade on the edge. So it's like a beautiful blurple color. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Now, um, when I did talk about this in that video, I mentioned that it's a little bit dark. Uh, I would like a little bit brighter. So what I did actually do after that video was um, I took some lighter colors, so like a pastel blue, and I took like a vibrant pink, and I sort of mixed it in with this. So I've sort of customized this and brightened it a little bit, and it is the most gorgeous nail polish color. It's still quite dark. You can see it's still a dark color. In direct sunlight, it looks a lot brighter, but um, in sort of in shade and stuff, it does look quite dark but um, this is gorgeous. So yeah, this is a favorite because I love the color, but it is something that I customize. So it's not something I can tell you to go buy, um, but it is beautiful and I've been loving it. And um, I realized that doing your nails is very hard with a newborn baby, but I managed to do it and hopefully it will last a while. So I don't have to do it again in the near future. Last thing I want to mention is some skincare that um, I recently opened up and I'm really enjoying and it's by The Ordinary. This is just the 100% organic cold pressed rosehip seed oil. Now, um, rosehip oil is my favorite oil to use on my face. Um, I find my skin responds really, really, really well to it. And it's a product that I used to use religiously for years, but in the last couple of years, I don't know, I think I used up a rosehip oil and then I was just using other serums that I had in my collection. And I, I always, oh, and I always find that if I use too many serums and layer too many products, my skin sort of gets overloaded and a bit shitty. So it was a product that I sort of stopped using. Um, so I haven't used rosehip oil for quite a few years now, but um, I did have this in my collection. And lately um, I've been using a moisturizer that just didn't feel like it was hydrating enough. So I've been using this with it and man, rosehip oil is great. It's really good for oily skin because I find that it's not too greasy. In the last year or so, when I have used a face oil, they've been really, really greasy and they sort of just leave your face feeling really greasy and they don't sink in. Whereas I find rosehip oil sinks in really nicely. And um, one good thing about it is if you've got oily skin, it sort of tricks your skin into thinking that it doesn't need to produce as many oils. So it gives you the sort of um, moisture that my skin has been needing lately, especially since we're sort of stuck at home. We've been using the heater a lot because newborns get cold. Um, my skin's been really sort of like dry and bleh, and this has been really helping it. So I love rosehip oil in general, but the one from The Ordinary is pretty affordable and it's a really nice one. I've been loving it. So I've been reaching for that day and night because I, I dig it. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. So I will list all the products that I discussed in the description box. And I'm going to go back to my baby now and feed him and see what it's up to. So I'll see you guys in the next one, which would hopefully be my Project Pan update. Because I have been using Project Pan stuff. Not all Project Pan stuff. A lot has been totally neglected over the last month. But there are some products that I have been making progress on. And I'm keen to keep that going. So um, hopefully I'll see you next week with that update. So see you guys then. Bye.